Last time on Fire Emblem Three Houses. You're curious to know how Edelgard is doing. Ooh, here we go. Yes? Oh, it's you, Professor. I was certain it was Hubert coming to drag me back to my duties. Have you been slacking off? Your Majesty, you must know your supreme talents are needed at present. Why not gaze at these documents instead of the sky? Did Edelgard just crack a joke? What the f One more failure could mean utter ruin for House Nouvelle. <clears throat> that is utterly ridiculous. One small assignment cannot affect your fate to such a degree. It is kind of you to say so. It does nothing for my house, but it helps me a small bit. Constance is the personification of self-doubt. Strengths mesh quite well together. Agreed. Perhaps we bring out the best in each other. We get paid for this? There is room to enrich myself further. Sunny Lady is the personification of self doubt. Shady Lady, on the other hand. There must be more to this. Cutting Gale? The F is that? Growth sustains me. I'm getting it. Swordbreaker? Nice suit. I've come too far to stop now. Yay, you can actually heal something now. Yay. Okay, as you can imagine, we have a fuck ton of supports. <laughs> and when I say a fuck ton, I mean a literal fuck ton. Strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. We're going for a ride. Um, well, you know what? Let's continue on with Happy because... Oh, wow, shit, we're about to finish up with Happy. Wait, was that the S with Happy we just did? Holy shit, that was the S with Happy. Holy shit. We're about to finish up happy! I feel bittersweet about this. I thought it was A. I thought it was A, but take a look. The S is done. Why is the S blue then? Doesn't blue mean it's done? Or does it have to be orange to be done? That was A support. So why is it blue? I'm a little confused. So do we still have to grind her rep, or is it organically gonna unlock? I have no idea. That was A. The S is unlocked. You can't do S yet. So... And this is gonna sound like a stupid question. That means I have S unlocked for Edelgard. S unlocked for Linhart. S is unique. Wait until routes near end. So all these blue S's means I still haven't done the S. It's at the end of the route. Is that correct? Because S support is the next one to be unlocked at some point. So is it locked or unlocked? Can I grind for it? Or is it just something I have to wait for? I'm trying to understand because I don't want to fuck it up. Because I have... Ooh. See, not everyone has an S. I like to imagine that for any support that Kuma is not part of, he's just watching from nearby. <laughs> what a fucking voyeur. Wait till later on the story. Okay. So I'm done for now. Cool, cool, cool. Just keep reminding me. Ooh, I got a lot of shit to do with Felix. Um, bunch of wow, wow. Damn, Leonie's locked. Eh, we can do that next time. Manuela's ass. Okay, let's just jump on Happy. Happy and Linhart. Let's see where this goes. Wait a minute, did we marry off Happy and Linhart last time? Who did we marry off with Linhart last time? I don't even remember. Did we marry Linhart off with... No, we didn't marry Linhart off with Constance. I thought he was with Happy. Hey, 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 what the fuck's going on here? Ugh, this path isn't the right way either. Why do epic quests always involve a lot of legwork? Ah, Linhart at Lysithia. Huh. 
Well, Abyss is a big place. Maybe it's time to start on your next epic quest. Giving up and going home. Uh, Happy, why are you even on this quest with him? I'm confused. People are dying up there after all. We don't have time for this sort of thing. What sort of thing? You? Huh? I'd say you're way more important than the pursuit of war. More interesting, too. Oh, God! I see what he's doing. You motherfucker. Yeah, I'm the next big thing in Christology. How flattering. <laughs> you gotta stop saying things like that or someone might get the wrong idea. Lucky for you, I'm used to your weirdness by now. Oh, God. I'm sorry my sincerity rubbed you the wrong way. I meant what I said, but that's fine. <laughs> this guy's really hitting on every single girl. It's funny that Linhard is the heir to my... Depravity. Now, back to your ability. I discovered that this power can be attributed to your blood. The magic originates from your crest. No shit! There have been leaps and bounds in research on summoning magic focused on an arbitrary target. The only remaining problems are perception and distance, though it could be argued that... Blah, blah, big words, blah. I don't even get what you're saying. You don't have to understand it to appreciate its implications. Here's the connection. Once we understand your power, it's essential that we have a theoretical grasp on how to control it. Okay, that's like step one. What did you actually learn? All right, all right, I'll do my best. That isn't as scientific as what I had in mind. Eh. I'll probably need your help wrapping my head around the theoretical stuff. You up for that? No pressure. Well, people might die if you say no, so some pressure, I guess? What makes you think Linhardt even gives a shit? Huh? Why me? Ugh, I guess it can't be helped. I suppose foisting this task on Professor Hanneman would be a waste of my precious efforts. This isn't what I had in mind, but I guess I'm the only man for the job, come to think of it. Sounds great. Hey, if you're tired, there's no shame in calling it a day and heading back to the surface. It's more walking than I expected. I've lost sleep over this. But you're way more important than a... Oh, right. You don't like me when I'm sincere. Oh, God, would you stop? <laughs> Children, get a fucking room already. Wait a minute. You're dating Lysithia. Linhard! I mean, Linhard, what are you doing? God damn it. Well, let's get on with the adventure then. We'll check out that hidden passage next. Stop cheating on the little mini nuke, you bastard. We've got to find that book that Timotheus is said to have left behind. Come along. Wait, she's not even small anymore. God damn it. Fine. But what if we don't find the book and you can't figure out a way to solve this? I've come this far. Now I've got to see it through to the end. How will I ever nap in peace otherwise? Sounds like we might be stuck together for a while. Oh, God damn it, Linhard. It's a bad omen that I called him Linhart, isn't it? That son of a bitch. That son of a bitch! That son of a bitch! Hey, what's this? Does he have more with Petra or what? Does he have more with Edelgard? I am so confused. The bond with this person is very deep. To deepen this bond further, you'll have to wait until after the war ends. Oh, I get it. Okay, Yaritza. Seriously, doing this was so difficult. Yuritsa and Constance, let's see where this goes. Well, well, look who it is. Hmm? Emil, it is you, isn't it? Are you feeling more talkative than when I saw you last? Emil? Do not call me that. Oh, God. Please don't poke the bear. He could literally kill you. Literally. <laughs> oh, look at you. From professor at the Officer's Academy to an Imperial General. Though you seem idle enough now, might you spare a moment for a proper apology? Uh, I don't think he's into cuckery, Constance. He doesn't strike me as the type. Could you not have even informed me when dear Mercedes left House Bartels? To say nothing of the scandal you caused. Granted, 
I can hardly blame you. That family being what it was. But did it never occur to you that I ought to have been consulted? What are you, his girlfriend? We've only known each other since childhood. Such callousness, such rank insensitivity. Oh god, he's just like, oh god, please shut up before I murder you. <laughs> Constance, you might actually die at the end of this. Emil, are you listening? Oh god, he's considering killing you. Oh, just, just walk away, Yuritsa. Just walk away. Just walk away. You think you can escape? <laughs> I won't be denied this time. Constance, you're literally poking a death knight here. You may think yourself skilled with a blade, but remember that my spell work is peerless. He's a fucking death knight! Dealing with you would be no more than a murmured word and a flick of a finger. He literally one-shotted you half a dozen times before! Shut up! <sighs> just, just walk away, Yuritsa. Just, just walk away. Uh -oh. Restrain yourself, Constance. <laughs> the lion, the witch, and the audacity of this bitch. Uh, I am the model of restraint. On the contrary, Emil, it is you who insists on being so... Uh-oh. I said not to call me that. Constance, you need to stop right now. You know I've not slipped from using General Yuritsa in public. And this is the thanks I get. Oh god, this is not gonna end well. Tell me, have you had a proper chat with Mercedes? You have, surely. Ugh. <sighs> You've always been the sort to keep your own counsel and let others draw their own conclusions. Would it kill you to be silent for once? Constance, please shut up! This is not gonna end well for you! Emil, oh. stop! This isn't over! Oh, thank God he walked away. <laughs> Wow. Thank God he kept his composure in that one. Those little arrows above a letter in support means there's more parts to it. Thank you. I have a lot more grinding to do. Linhard has a second partner to Edelgard and Petra. That's what the thing above the A means for him. Well, it looks like I need to grind more shit. Is it bad I want to see where this goes with Sunny Lady? When he went... I was like, oh god, he's about to strangle her to death. <laughs> you don't just get the title of Death Knight by not murdering people, you know what I mean? You don't just go and piss off one of the scariest guys in the army. Oh god, Bernadetta. Okay, let's go with Merced. Wait, why is that just C? Oh god, that was just C. Oh wow. You get actual stats from doing supports? That's awesome. Hello, Emil. The War Council is about to begin. Come on! Oh god, is he gonna do a Batman thing? <sighs> oh god. He's gonna do the Death Knight thing. Does the Death Knight come out in the dark? Or how does this thing work? What's the matter? You're so pale. Have you been injured? Oh god, he's gonna do the Death Knight thing, isn't he? Isn't he? Emil? What the fuck? Must slay more. What? There is no pleasure to be had in these halls. My thirst is unbearable. Okay, you made a bear joke. I like it. Perhaps bathing in your blood will help satiate me. Um... That is mildly disturbing. Would you settle for a warm cup of coffee and cake? Maybe a teddy bear? Wait, you... you're not Emil. 
You're the Death Knight. Mm-hmm. We've got borderline personality disorder. You may look like him, but you are not him. He would never say such a thing. Now we just need to find out what the trigger is to switch. What care I for names? I care only to kill or be killed. What about desserts? I see. So you want to kill me? Then do as you must. It is within your rights. Wow, Mercedes has balls of steel because she realizes that if he tries to kill her, Yuritsa will just overpower the Death Knight and slip back in. Bold move, Mercedes. Either that or she's just insane. My rights? Mother and I must be the reason that Death Knight exists within you. A young boy left all alone in House Bartels without us? I can't imagine how lonely and terrible that must have been. So he was going through very difficult circumstances and because he couldn't handle the situation, he created a person within himself that could handle the situation and he let that person do it instead. And because he was that person for so long, the person started developing a deeper and deeper personality in his psyche until eventually it was two personas in one head. Poor thing. That is a very difficult thing to reconcile. Because you can't just deny its existence. You can push it at the back of your mind, but if you ever slip into it, you just lose all control. It's very difficult to actually integrate that part of yourself into yourself. That, that takes a lot of, well, acceptance. And that's a very difficult thing to do. Most people deny parts of themselves, as opposed to, you know, accepting it. To our half-siblings who bore no crests, we were nothing more than intruders. Their horrible words and violent actions were only bearable because the three of us supported one another through it. Does he not have a crest? All alone in a place like that, it's little wonder that you broke down as you have. We should have rescued you. We should have offered ourselves to save you. Nonsense. However, we cannot turn back the hands of time. Atonement is all I have for you now. Both he and her were the only ones in that house, is what she said. Oh. Uh, you don't understand anything. Emil? The day you left, 18 years ago, I told Mother to leave me there. What? But why did you do such a thing? I... wanted to protect you. I am glad that we are reunited. I am happy that you are... alive. Aww. Why do I feel this odd urge to give him a hug? I'm not even the hugging type, but I feel like he needs a hug. A genuine hug. I... I am so sorry, my dear sister. It's so easy just to label someone as evil and just say, he's the Death Knight, he's evil, because he's evil, full stop. And then behind the mask is an actual little boy that suffered and is only this way because that's the only way he knew how to survive. Wow. Jesus. Wow, 
Okuma, I feel like you got lucky having her on your side of the war, since it could be a bit fucked with him having to fight her if you never recruited her. Yeah, and you would never realize what that's all about. Yurita? I probably missed a lot of supports because I didn't manage to recruit all the students, but it is what it is. What? Okay, this should be interesting. <laughs> I've got it all figured out. What? Hmm? Your true identity. Hmm. <laughs> this is so cute because Bernadette is like a little kid, and on the inside, Yuritsa is kind of a little kid. So this works really well. If my detective skills are correct, then you are. Hmm. The Death Knight, right? Oh, what gave you that idea? Everyone already knows that. <laughs> what? Everyone knows? But how? Oh god, Detective Bernie. Oh, and here I thought that I'd uncover your big spooky secret. What gave it away? Oh, Bernie, you're such a shut-in that you missed the biggest news in town. <sighs> <laughs> he is so done, but unlike with Constance, he doesn't actually want to murder her. He just really just wants to get out of here. So, here's the deal, Yuritsa. You've got to tell me a secret about you that nobody else knows. <laughs> what? Why? I am so confused. Why? Oh my god, I'm channeling my inner Yuritsa. Because! I sleuthed for hours upon hours! That's got to be rewarded! Excuse me? No, you don't get rewarded on the time you spent doing something. You get rewarded on the outcome you produced. You don't get a participation award. Just stop. Oh, come on. Please. Oh, oh, I know. I got it. Why do you wear that crazy looking armor when you're pretending to be the Death Knight? Because that's the armor of the Death Knight. Are you just into the look of it? You like spooky stuff? Well, I may have been drawn to that aspect. To look sinister. To embody death. Oh god, Yuritsa's a cosplayer, isn't he? Oh, I see. I thought maybe you put on that mask and armor because, just like old Bernie, you don't like talking to people. <laughs> Could you imagine? Wait, can we make Bernie into a Death Knight class? Oh my god, we need to make Bernie into a Death Knight class. There may be some truth to that. Talking to people is intolerable. Oh yeah? <laughs> I think I'm sensing a real kinship between us. I told you this dynamic is gonna work really well. So, with that whole spooky getup on, it allowed you to speak to people with confidence. You mean because they were literally shitting themselves? No. Hmm? Oh, hey, Yurita. Don't tell anyone about this, okay? Hmm? This is our little secret. I don't mind, but I also don't understand. You and me both, brother. <laughs> Bernie, you do realize that you just made friends with a serial killer, right? Why do I get the feeling that Bernie's gonna bang the Death Knight at some point? I mean... It seems like a Bernie thing to do. He's not so bad. When you get to know him, he's really nice. But he murdered 10,000 people! Yeah, but like... It was a war. They were civilians! Yeah, but... You know, that wasn't him. If we walk out of this with a Death Knight of Bernie, this will be worth it. I'm actually curious, can we make Bernie into a Death Knight? I want to find out. Oh god, this is going to be so fucked if we can turn Bernie into a Death Knight. That would just be hilarious. H how do I check if I can turn someone into a Death Knight? How does it work? Uh, certifications, uh, Bernie. It's a special class, isn't it? Uh, Trickster, War Cleric, Dark Flyer, Valkyrie. Damn it. Wait a minute. Dark Knight. 
a mysterious knight versed in black magic. This class can move again after taking certain actions. Wait, isn't Dark Knight the equivalent of a Death Knight? Riding Reasoned Lance. Oh my god, Bernie can be a Death Knight, can't she? Reason and Lance. She can be a Death Knight. She can be a Bow Knight, like, fucking easily. Oh my god, so much purple. Uh, Graceful Archer. Ah, so this is what, um... Felix was going for. Reason and Sword. See, Lance acts fl Wait. So the difference between a Bow Knight and a Wyvern Lord is the axe and the bow? Huh. And a Falco Knight is sword, lance, flying. Riding aloft this knight is weak to arrows with high defense against magic. This can be... Huh. Huh. Oh, good God. Picturing Bernie acting crazy with bloodlust. It is possible. So this is what Felix was going for. He's currently assassin. He could be a fortress knight? Oh, hell yeah. That's a heavy... <laughs> it looks like a transformer. Can he... What is this? Trickster war monk. Yeah, he can be a great knight. Heavily armored Grey Knight has high defense while remaining mobility. This is this would be highly effective. Axe B or higher. God damn it! Why the fuck do you need an axe? Just give him a goddamn spear. And he could also be a Dark Knight. Huh. Sword and Reason. Oh God, this is so Japanese. This looks like an Uchiha. Look at it, man. He's got a shutting gun and everything. Jesus Christ, this looks so cool. Felix, I think we found something for you, man. I think Yuritsa has a special dark seal, so I'm curious to see what you can make with it. I think... Yuritsa... Wait, his current... What's his current class? Death Knight. This knight in dark armor is able to use magic and move again after attacking. So he's getting three lands, three reason, three horse. But it's not even considered a master thing. You still have dark knight, which requires more reason. So it's not even his final form. Because this makes him look like Sauron. I mean, look at that armor. This looks like freaking Sauron. And our little tactical nuke. She gets bonus magic. But if we want to make her a... So we don't need to actually put her on anything. We can make her a dark flyer. She just needs flying. Dark flyers and body and pegasus into battle and wield magic effortlessly. This unit can move again after attacking. This knight excels in black magic. Yeah, she, she'll definitely make a good dark flyer. Because she can go in, nuke, and then fly out. Yeah, she's currently a dark flyer. So dark flyer is good. What is this though? Falco Knight? Dark Knight. Hmm. How close is she to a mortal servant? Uh, who are we talking about for mortal servant? Are we talking about... Bernie? 
Oh, Lysithia. I don't think she's ha she's even close to Mortal Serpent. Because she was never going for it. She doesn't have any sword skill. Oh my god, that looks so fucking cute. Oh my god, you look adorable. Oh my god. What the fuck? What the fuck? You look fucking adorable. Oh my god. This is the cutest shit ever. Oh, that is so cute. Alright, I gotta stop doing this, otherwise we're not gonna get anywhere with our supports. Man, at the moment she's just one-shotting people. It's not like, um... Alright, more supports, guys. Where were we? We were with, uh, Yaritza, who's just done all this stuff. Shamir! Come on, Shamir. Shamir and the Leone. Let's see where this goes. I heard what you did. I'm disappointed, Leone. What'd you do, Leone? Who'd you do, Leone? Um, hi, Shamir. What have you heard exactly? You aimed your bow at a group of students passing through the monastery. Was this your idiotic idea of training? Whoa! Never aim a live weapon at civilians or comrades. Are you... Jesus, Leone, what the fuck? I told you to be cautious. I'm sorry. Idiotic's a bit harsh though, isn't it? No, it's not because an accidental discharge could have killed somebody or taken out an eye. What were you planning on doing after you took aim? Shooting passers-by? Of course not. If you want to train, choose a target you can actually shoot. I know. Everyone was pretty mad. I really am sorry. Nobody's happy to have a bow pointed at them. My mentor used to do that kind of thing a lot. Excuse me? Mentor? Was that Gerald? The fuck? I don't know much about him. Would he really do that? He doesn't strike me as the type. Would and did. Mostly when he was drunk, though. What the fuck?! Not a good habit to emulate. From now on, only aim at bugs, like I showed you. Bugs? Because they're small? But, um, I don't really like bugs. Well, that's why you're shooting at them. You don't like bugs? That should make you want to aim at them even more. I just can't look at them. Seeing all the extra legs and things, ugh, makes my skin crawl. <laughs> I see what you did there. Then just draw some spiders and hang them on the walls. Aim at the drawings whenever you pass one. Overcome your fear of bugs while you train. Shamir, you are one fine lady. You want me to draw spiders? Ew, no. Would that even help? Yes, I should know. Wait, you were scared of spiders? Huh? You were scared of them too? I was, but they don't bother me anymore. Hey, I'm not a big fan of spiders either. Okay, you've talked me into it. I'll give it a try. And don't hang them where other people might pass. Oh boy. <laughs> got it, got it. Learn my lesson, promise. I'm choosing to believe that. Ha! <laughs> Shamir, you are one interesting teacher. Shamir's pretty sweet sometimes. Hubert! That's the last of them. Hmm? <laughs> Nanny? Another threat to her majesty? Who's there? She just saved your butt, didn't she? It's me. You owe me for that one. Yeah, you owe her dinner and a drink. Shamir, what are you doing here? Saving your ass, apparently. Same thing you are, but I'm after a particular target. The dark side of the Knights of Seros is proving troublesome. I should have known, having been one. I was... negligent. Holy shit, did Cupid just admit... WHAT HAPPENED TO YOU?! I had thought we'd sufficiently thin the numbers of these scum. Seems I was mistaken. In any case, you have my thanks. I am mortified. Save it. Just doing my job. Even so, killing your former allies. Do you feel no remorse whatsoever? Hubert, don't make it awkward. Just offer the lady a drink and a dinner as a way of saying thank you. 
You'll get much further than asking her, so how does it feel to slay your former comrades? Jesus, Hubert, Christ's sake! You wouldn't, so I ask. <laughs> whoa, whoa, I like Shamir. You are not me. Answer the question. Hubert, you should be careful with this one. She could probably kick your ass. What's it matter? I owed a debt to Rhea. I served in the Knights of Saros to repay her. And now you're trying to kill her. I repaid that debt. Now I'm here. A Shamir always pays her debts. I'm sure it was considered dishonorable of me to leave. But that's none of my concern. <laughs> Lord Shimura would not approve of Shamir. I have no connection to the Saros faith, nor to the ways of Fodlan. <laughs> that's right. You're from Dagda. Oh god, Hubert, what the fuck was that? Well, consider me glad you're on the right side. At least for the time being. You worry too much. Watch out, or it'll be the death of you. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hubert, you need to buy this girl a drink. Come on, man, you need to buy her a drink. Do you think Shami would work with the ghost? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, she definitely would. She definitely has assassin vibes. Come on. Plus she's a babe. Caspar. Leave this to me. Go. Shamir, look out! Ah! How much you want to bet Caspar loses his virginity to Shamir? I am okay with this. Caspar, are you all right? Talk to me. <laughs> Shamir. <laughs> Did I just call it? Because this would be adorable. Lower your voice. I'm right here. This is adorable. Look out! The enemy's right... Uh, we're in the infirmary? Oh, this is gonna be fucking hilarious. Oh my god. Oh my god. The boy's gonna become a man. Correct. It took you a while to wake up. Eh, not bad for a first time. You nearly died protecting me. Why did you do something so reckless? Come on, play your cards right. Play your cards right. Play your cards right. You could, like, come on, man. You, you, you could land this plane. Well, I saw that you were in trouble, and... Good boy, go for that whole innocent, reckless thing. Is this your attempt to take responsibility for your father's actions? Wait, what did your daddy do to her? I don't need your pity, Kaspar. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. I do feel guilty for what my father did to the Dagdens, but this has nothing to do with that. Wow, there's a lot going on here. I saw you were in danger and my body moved before I could even think about it. That's all. You are still a fool. Learn to protect yourself before trying to protect me. There's no point in losing one life to save another. Yours holds just as much value as mine. I understand what you're saying, but... However, I cannot deny that I owe you a debt. Here we go. Thank you, Caspar. And I apologize. Um, for what? You didn't do anything. For when we spoke before, I may have been too harsh. Oh damn, you chipped her armor. I cannot hold a grudge against someone who would risk his life for mine. Damn. That said, you need not worry about me. Uh, yeah, glad to hear it. But I gotta say, not worrying about you is a lot easier said than done. No one likes anyone clingy, Caspar. Don't be a simp. You don't have to save all of the maidens. Just, just... Oh yeah. Caspar's gonna lose his virginity to Shamir. I'm calling it now. He, he's gonna lose his virginity to Shamir. He is definitely going to lose his virginity to Shamir. It, it's gonna happen. It's the forbidden fruit. Oh, but his father ravaged my people. So maybe I should ravage him. Come on, Caspar is a true knight. He actually cares about women rather than their parts. I get that. I get that. But try to look at it from Shamir's point of view. He is young, he is genuine, and at the same time, 
She's hated his guts and his family's guts all this time. It's very confusing, and it's also forbidden fruit. You cannot deny the allure of forbidden fruit. And, and, he's not too bad. He's, he's a handsome young man, and what he does is pretty sweet. So, if anyone's got a chance of, you know, catching her eye, it's probably someone like him. A gullible but lovable fool. Alright, like... I, 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 want, I want to see how this plays out. I, I legit want to see how this shit plays out. I, I want to see how this plays out. This might actually play out quite well. Dang! This is turning into a dating simulator, goddammit. Alright, Caspar. Who else have you been talking to? Ash? I mean, sure. You two have a thing going. So it's basically the Tsundere love story then, Kuma. I mean, sure, why not? When will you do another anime watching? After Fire Emblem. We've got some supports to do. Go on, eat up. <laughs> oh wow, you're really going at it. Um, please tell me that's a cat or a dog. Meow. Oh, thank god it's a cat. Still hungry, huh? You're a greedy little fellow. Please tell me that's a cat or a dog. Oh, thank god it's a cat. Here he comes, right on time. The food's all ready to go. Wait a minute, that cat is cheating on them. That cat's about to get so fat. Huh? Ash, what are you doing here? Uh, Kaspar, I, I was just, uh... Hey, hang on a second. Did you come here to feed the cat too? Oh, you two have been played. Feed? <laughs> well, I don't know what you're... Wait, did you say two? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> that fucking cat. I have been for a while. I had no idea you were doing the same. <laughs> that cat must be so fat. I was just worried about the guy. I didn't want someone else to find him and hurt him. I figured it would be best to watch out for him. You know me, defender of the helpless. God damn it, Caspar. You, you are so innocent, it's adorable. More importantly though, what's your excuse? No wonder you two are friends. I didn't want him stealing more supplies, so I, I figured I'd take care of him. So, instead of the cat stealing supplies, you just given it to him? Sure, why not? Guess we're not so different after all, are No, we? you two are like brothers, literally. You two are like fucking brothers. <sighs> yeah, I guess we're not. Deep down. Since you're here, why don't you feed this little guy what you brought him? Oh yeah! <laughs> I've got something good. Looks like it. Hey, where did you get that? Oh god, you stole it, didn't you? Uh... Get what? It looks awfully fresh. You didn't take that from the kitchen, did you? <laughs> Is that some dried fish and vegetables? Looks like someone's leftovers. <laughs> leftovers my ass. Well, I, um, never mind how I got mine. What about yours? Oh, you've been caught red-handed. Uh, I'm a defender of the helpless. You really think I'd steal some food for a cat? You know, uh, kids will always be kids in my eyes. I got it by fighting an old guy in the dining hall. I want it fair and square. Wait, you took this off an old guy in the dining hall? That's just worse! You started a fight over that? With an old guy! No! The old guy started a fight, then I took his dinner as a prize. You robbed him?! Aw, oh, you love this meat, don't you? And you love when I fight, don't you? Oh, god damn it! <laughs> Fuck! <sighs> well, this cat's happy, so I'll let you off easy just this once. You're lucky he's so cute. I don't know where they got the inspiration for these supports, but they're sometimes just hilarious. They go from being very emotional and, you know, heartwarming or heartbreaking to just being outright ludicrous at times. It's, it's, it's just such a nice mix. I'm loving it. God fucking damn it, Caspar. All right, Ash. Like, we're here. Ooh, Ash and Petra. You gotta get that, boy. Over here, Petra. Are you taking her out on a date? Ash, I do not have...
have familiarity with this alley. Oh my god, he's taking her out on a date! This is adorable! That's all right. This is the place I was talking about. It's not much to look at, but the food's incredible. He's taking her out on a date! Oh my god! They grow up so fast. Here you are, friends. Enjoy your meal. Oh my god. Wait, did you just take her to the dining hall? God damn it, Ash! I told you better than this! Take her somewhere she hasn't been! Mm, looks great. Let's dig in. Okay. I will be giving this my try. Ah, he understands that a way to a woman's heart is through her stomach. Well played, young apprentice. Well played. Oh! It has a delicious flavor. Ash, what is this dish being called? Uh, I'm not sure it has a name. They just kind of throw together whatever they've got. Kuma, stop hooking up your students. They could start making love on the battlefield. I guess love can bloom on the battlefield. No wonder they call it Crimson Rose. Oh my god, the rose is not blood, it's romance. SHIT! But that means you never eat the same dish twice. Not knowing what you'll get is part of the fun. Oh my god, he understands females. The suspense, the intrigue. A dish of infinite varieties. You would not be finding such a wonder in a restaurant for nobles. A commoner technique indeed. I give you my gratitude, Ash. I have learned a great many things about the commoner techniques. Or it's another kind of blood. Hexen. 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 For that naughty corner. Naughty corner, Hexen. Naughty corner. Very bad Hexen. Naughty corner. You go in the naughty corner. No need to be so formal. I like showing you around. Not many people want to come to places like this. Ash, don't sell yourself short. Don't talk about other people. This is about the two of you. Other people don't matter right now. But I am feeling that our deal has been very... one-sided. Are you sure you are not needing anything in exchange? Okay, Ash. Don't play your cards too soon. Just say something like, seeing you happy is all I want. Some cheesy shit like that. Girls love that shit. And you know it. If you are not wanting any curses, I can offer other information in trade. <laughs> Hey, come on, stop that. Come on, play the sweet card, play the sweet card. Stop that? What am I stopping? Talking about payment. You don't owe me anything. Come on, play the sweet card, come on. We're friends, aren't we? No! Friends don't pay each other for the time they spend together. No! 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 Bad Bash! Yep, yep, dimater! Fuck! Damn it! Fuck! Don't do that! Never. Do. That. No. Fucking expunge the word friends from your fucking vocabularies right now. The word friend doesn't exist. The word tomodachi doesn't exist. Fuck that shit. Get that shit out of here. It doesn't exist. Thank you for gifting Hexen. <laughs> and hey, Mike. <laughs> but seriously, the word friend doesn't exist. I don't have any female friends, and neither should you. God fucking damn it. Ash! Ah! Oh, you used the bet money to gift the sub. Thank you. Much appreciated. Ah. <laughs> uh. You won that bet fair and square, by the way. Just make sure you buy yourself something as well. Don't just gift it all back. Buy yourself something. Even if it's a snack or a takeaway or a game or something, buy yourself something. You and I are friends? Are you speaking truth? I <laughs> can't. Fuck. I. I hope so, at least. 
So why don't we just talk about whatever we'd like, okay? Yeah, why don't you fucking paint each other's nails while you're at it and do each other's hair? I have understanding. I will now be speaking whatever I wish. Congratulations, Ash. You are now an emotional tampon. Good work. You are my friend. There are many things I am wishing for you to know. Oh, fuck me. I now know what disappointment feels like. Oh, what the fuck is the next date? She's gonna tell you about the guy she's dating? <sighs> Kuma, you know that Ash isn't looking for the coochie. You got your Monokuma kid? He's Mono Kid and he's awesome. You fucking ruined it! You fucking ruined it! Can we get someone that isn't a disappointment? Okay, Dorothea, you were... Dor come on, Dorothea and Felix. Wait, Dorothea, aren't you getting married to Yuri? Yeah, you're already married to Yuri. Don't just go for any long-haired guy. That's not kosher. You're following me. Stop. Damn! And we're in that of all things. Look at that, it's got quick access. All you gotta do is pinch and pinch and they're all down. Except for the top, I don't know how to take that off. That looks... You know what? Fuck it. I'm leaving you alone just as you asked. I may be walking the same way as you, but... What do you want? Babies. She wants babies. You've made it abundantly clear I'm not to want anything from you, including politeness. Okay, guys, seriously, what happened between the two of you? What, what, what is this? I heard a rumor that you're planning to settle down with a noble. <laughs> Told you, she wants the babies. I abandoned my family, so you'll have to look elsewhere. Not much to gain from marrying me. Holy shit, Felix is just calling it as it is. I like this kid, he will go far. I just find you interesting is all. Is that so odd? <laughs> oh yeah, she wants Felix. Interesting? I'm not interesting. What do you mean? <laughs> oh boy, here we go. I've never met a noble so... unsociable. Yes, that's the word, unsociable. Oh boy, here we go. Other nobles are quick to be friends, even if it's just because they might gain something from it. Mm -hmm. The Empire's nobility, maybe. The kingdom's nobility is a whole different animal. If they are, so what? You should care how others think of you. Why? I don't answer to them. All that matters is improving my skill. Okay, Virgil. I'll prove my worth on the battlefield. God damn it, he is Virgil. Those people care so much about appearances they can't even see each other. It makes me sick. Oh, I agree. What's important isn't how someone looks, it's their true nature. <coughs> Dorothea, excuse me? I don't pretend to know your true nature. I don't even have a very good understanding of my own. But I suppose you see mine just fine, don't you? Hmm? Just a silly girl with no thoughts in her head except for marrying a noble. Yes? <laughs> Goodbye, Felix. Hmm. Oh no, she got into his head, didn't she? She got into your head, didn't she? Oh god damn it, she got into your head, didn't she? She got in your head, didn't she? Oh, she got in your fucking head. Felix! You've just been played. God damn it. Go talk to a sweet girl like Lysithia. Felix! I've awaited this fated day. What, she wants chocolate, or is she gonna give you the chocolate? Would you recommend this game to non-RTS players? I've honestly almost never played RTS, and I enjoy this game more so for the social interactions and story rather than the gameplay. Because, let's face it, the gameplay is fun, but you don't play this for the gameplay. You play it for this. It is, it is, 
It is a meme machine. She got into his head, but not his pants. See, women are clever. They first get into your head, and then you're all they think about. And then you can get into their pants whenever you want. Men just try to go straight for the pants, and nine times out of ten fail because they're idiots. My god, how I spent my youth. I'm not that old! God damn it! You don't change. Still prattling on about it. Aw, come on. I just want to hear what you thought of the cake I gave you. Why is Lysithia so obsessed with trying to get his approval? Uh, it was edible. Nani? If by edible you mean incredible, then yes, I agree. <laughs> that is so cute. It was satisfying and lightweight. I imagine it would be quite useful as a battlefield provision. Please refrain from lumping delectable cake into the same category as provisions. That's cute. You're upset and I don't understand why. I'm complimenting the cake. You cured my dislike of sweets. For that, I think. Oh god. Oh god, she's getting in your head too. You have an interesting way of giving compliments, but I'm glad you liked it. She's not getting in your head, she's getting in your stomach. Yes. Got any cakes on you? Oh god, she's got you cooked. I mean, hooked. Wait. What did you put in that cake? You say that as though I just carry cake on me at all times. Did you want some? That bitch. She's always been offering him cake. And now that he's hooked on it, she's reduced the supply. Lysithia, you fucking drug dealer. You crack fiend. You're a monster. I am so proud of Lysithia right now. That's not what I meant. If you baked a cake, however, I wouldn't object to eating a slice. Oh, shit! If cake is what you want, you can just ask me directly. She's got him. She's fucking got him. It just so happens I have a brand new recipe I tried out, special for you. He's fucked. He's fucked. You know, you gotta give points to Lysithia. She's a crafty one. I like it. It's delicious and not overly sweet. Perfect for you. God damn it, Lysithia. I am so proud. You got a guy that's one, not interested in dating, and two, doesn't even fucking like cake. Which means this whole cake thing is a you and him thing. And it's something you like that you've made him like. Shit, girl. The other students are fucking playing checkers and she's playing 4D chess. God damn! Okay. Go on, take a bite. Wow. Girl's got game. Hmm. Felix is oddly popular for someone who doesn't seek out this kind of relationship. It's called supply and demand. By keeping supply low, you increase the relative value. There might only be three or four girls that are into him, but the fact that no one's been able to catch him means he's a catch. And having someone like Felix means, hey, see who I caught? Yeah, you just keep that guy that's been running around looking for a girlfriend. I got this guy that doesn't even want a girlfriend. What, you think girls don't pull that sort of shit? You think guys are the only ones that like to show off their partners? Guys? You, you, you really think we're that special? You really think we're that different? You think girls don't like to have, you know, competitions with each other? Come on, cause some girls out there have some game. <laughs> don't underestimate the girls out there, they've got some fucking game. They play the long game. They play the strategy game, right? We play the short term blitzkrieg, you know, hit and run, but <laughs> you forget one thing. A guy's hoping he might get lucky. The girl already knows. You love it. I can tell. Here, try this one out too. He's fucked. He's fucked. There, there, there is no saving this man. He's hooked. Hook, line, and sinker. Hmm. Oh, god damn it. 
Just keep working on that sweet tooth of yours. Felix is a crack fiend at this point. Then we can share cake notes together and eat cake together all the time. Did I just see a love heart? That is, it just sounds nice is all. Hmm? Oh, okay. That does sound nice. Oh my god! She just whipped Virgil! Oh my fucking god! Holy shit! Ladies and gentlemen, she got him. She got him. Lysithia, I take my proverbial hat off to you, milady. See, he has three more girls to talk to, but while he's talking to those three girls, he's thinking about that cake, and there's only one girl that knows how to make that cake. Lasithia's one. She's one. She deserves a round of applause. Wow. That, that was, that's, that's... Masterfully done. I, I... Alright, Leone. I hope she isn't working on Kuma as well. As we can see, Lysithia is one of the brighter ones. Oh yeah. She's not to be underestimated. Jesus Christ. I think Lysithia might be Princess Peach, hey, as she always I'm offers Mario take cake. Got anything you want me to take? There's a reason why Princess Peach is called Princess Toadstool. She uses the mushrooms on the heads of those little people to control them. Those mushroom people aren't actually people. It's the mushrooms controlling them, turning them into zombies. That's why she's called Princess Toadstool. She's effectively taken over an entire kingdom using a parasitic mushroom. Peach is actually the main villain of the story. Bowser's just trying to liberate the kingdom, which is why he's united the different races of the kingdoms to try to stop Princess Toadstool. But her lead simp Mario keeps foiling his plans. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You've been playing the bad guy. Lysithia doesn't need cake to win over Kuma. She already does that with her magic abilities and combat abilities. Look, I love Lysithia because she's a walking, talking, tactical nuke. But if the tactical nuke also knows how to bake cakes, I mean, fuck me, right? All the better. I mean, you love a sports car because of its performance, but if the sports car has a really awesome stereo system at the same time, it's just the bonus, you know? It's the icing on the cake. It's the cherry on top. You're not gonna say no, it just makes it all the better. Damn, Lysithia, damn. Uh, how about these? Just some old study notes of mine. Excuse me? Wow, that's quite the pile there. You sure it's all fine to throw away? Of course. It's all safely stored in my brain now. If I concentrate, I can access any of it with ease. Do you have photographic memory? Why does Bowser Jr. think she's his mom? Maybe she is. I mean, she's been kidnapped by Bowser how many times? Why am I not surprised? I wish I had even half your power of concentration. Okay, here we go. Ugh, this is pretty heavy. Well, it'll be a good workout. Oh, but you were telling me not to take my training so lightly. 
still, can't hurt to get a little exercise in. I'll just take it at a run. See you later. Hmm. Hmm? What is it, Lysithia? Was there something in that pile of paper you wanted to hang on to after all? No, that's not it. There's just... something I want to say to you. I'm sorry for saying your way of doing things was inefficient. Lucifer is a goddamn puppet master. You've clearly grown plenty strong, doing things as you have. Not to mention, multitasking and training in that way surely presents interesting challenges. <laughs> well, sure. But if everyone has their own methods, then your methods aren't wrong either. All you did was share them with me, so there's no need for apologies. Still, it's probably beyond me to imitate your levels of focus and concentration. Well, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. How do you even manage to throw yourself into only one thing like that? I haven't much choice. I can't waste even a single moment. Hmm. The knowledge of your impending death has caused you to act. Because unlike most people that actually waste life, you know the value of it because it's so limited. I can understand that. I'm sort of the same way. I hate feeling like I'm not getting enough work done. Anyway, you should just do what works for you. You've got something you want to achieve, right? That's why you feel pressured to study so hard. Yes. Then focus on what matters to you. Leave the rest to people who have the time for it. And hey, if you need any heavy lifting done, you know where to go. The way I see it, it's all training. You know, Leonie, you're so kind, so strong. Whoa, what's with the compliments all of a sudden? Uh, Lysithia, what the fuck are you doing? I was just thinking what an incredible partner you'd make. Really, you've got all of the perfect qualities. Lysithia, are you... a flayer? What? I'm not simply saying that. I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. Holy shit! <laughs> You're making me blush. What a strange way to compliment someone. Holy shit! Holy shit! This is not her supports. These are her simps. Oh my god! See, when a girl does something like that, that just makes me want to... But then I'd just be falling right into her trap. I think she's going off the Edelgard too. I can't believe I didn't see it. All this time, I was just like, I want to pat you on the head and feed you with sweets. And she's fucking pulling in the fucking Empress! Man, Lysithia would be a challenge to catch. She's like a legendary... She's like one of the legendary dogs. She's everywhere. Elusive. Rare. Powerful. St Jesus. I didn't notice until now. My God. How are you today, Lysithia? Oh, you know, she just pulled in three simps. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. And yourself? Look how she's just like, fine, thank you. Oh my god. Quite well, thank you. 
Oh boy. I overheard something recently. Something pertaining to you and your vision for the future. Oh boy. Is it really true that you intend to create a world in which crests no longer exist? It's true. My aim is to dismantle the current system of aristocracy. Why do I get the feeling that the two of you have a goal in common that you could help each other with? The only reason nobles enjoy the status they do is because their bloodlines carry crests. If crests lose their value, so will titles of nobility. I really agree with your thinking. My parents have suffered throughout their lives due to their nobility. Oh no, she's playing the empathy game. She's telling a story about her own family that's gonna resonate with Edelgard. Oh no, she's luring in the Empress. Edelgard, don't listen. Due to my own crests, I've never been able to live a normal life. And now she's cranking it up to the personal level. No, Edelgard, don't fall for it. I'm sick of nobility and crests. Of all of it. It sounds as if it's truly your mission to change things. And now she's cranking it up. I'll pledge my life to your cause, however short it may be. Oh god, she is good! She's literally just mirrored everything Edelgard said. Just cranked it up in her own personal story. Edelgard's gonna eat it up. Lysithia. Oh, come on Edelgard, don't fall for it, don't fall for it. Come on, come on, come on. Where's that cynical bitch we've spent the last six months with? Come on, Edelgard! I know you're in there somewhere! Has your hair always been that color, by the way? Oh, no! No, she's going in for the kill! Huh? Oh, shit! She knows your dirty little secret! I asked because mine wasn't always this color. I lost all pigment after receiving my two crests. Damn, she's really going for the kill. She's going for that dirty little secret they both share. Hubert, get your butt in here! Protect your queen! Edelgard, I want a world where people like you and I are no longer victimized. I want you to bring that world into being. Hubert, hurry the fuck up! If it's within me to help that come to pass, then I'll do whatever it takes. Understood. I promise to do all I can to see this goal to fruition. Oh boy. And I want you to promise something in return. That you will never stop fighting for your life. <sighs> Whatever terrible fate awaits us, we can fight it and prevail. I need you to trust me on that. Do you promise? I... I promise. I will try my best to believe that. I love how Edelgard thinks she's in control of the situation. She's not. Good girl. Now then, would you care for a sweet cake? Oh my god, Edelgard! Do you really think you're the one offering her a cake? She's a fucking cake dealer! Do you know who you're messing with? Uh, please do not call me that. But, uh, yes. Yes, I would. Do not underestimate this little spawn of Satan! Oh my god, Edelgard. Your hubris has become your own undoing. Oh my god! Holy shit, Lysithia. Holy shit. And Kuma, she isn't done yet. There is still one target left in her sights. Oh my god. Remember, their whole support line started with cake. What is in that cake? Hubert, where the fuck were you, you dickhead? Hubert! Did you just sit down? Did you just sit down to someone else's it's level? strange. 
I never thought you and I would be able to sit together and drink tea like this. Is this what you were doing? Your queen, your empress, your charge is getting swooped by Lysithia and you're sitting here drinking tea with Ferdinand? Are you joking? Drink tea, you say? But that does not smell like tea. The aroma. Would that be coffee by any chance? It might as well be heroin! So Lysithia manipulates Edelgard into a lifetime supply of cake, and then she uses that cake to manipulate others like Felix by adding her own personal touch. Which is probably heroin. And then they think that they're in love with the cake, and they're craving the cake. Meanwhile, they've been hooked to drugs. Lysithia's a monster. Lysithia is a literal fucking monster. And I've been treating her like a little child. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he didn't exist. God damn it, Lysithia. Kuma, this is the power of two crests. The power of ultimate game. Lysithia has mastered it, while Edelgard has... ...succumbed. Lysithia is the ultimate cake cook. Teru Teru wishes he's her. The boys are fucked. Imported from Dagda, I believe. I do not care for it myself. Kuma, the best part is that she has told you to your face that she isn't a child and to stop treating her like one. Well, reverse fucking psychology, motherfucker! Wait, but maybe that was her plan. By speaking the truth and hiding it in plain sight, we never realized it. And by treating her like a child, she used it to her advantage. I've been played. Wait, how many people didn't you bring into your class that she was working on? Oh god. It wouldn't surprise me at this point if Lysithia orchestrated this entire war on her own. We think that we wanted a war, but it was Lysithia's plan all along. The knowledge is impressive. Although I should expect nothing less from a noble, I suppose. Can you two please stop jacking each other off? You just lost your queen to a little she-devil. You've been doing exactly as she's wanted all along. Oof. I'm sorry, I need to collect what's left of my, um, <clears throat> self-confidence. I don't think I will never fully recover from this. Can you really hate the mini nuke though, Kuma? I don't know whether I'm terrified impressed or utterly infatuated by her game. This will take a while to process. Lady Edelgard surpasses you in nearly every respect. Oh my god, Hubert. But I think when it comes to positivity, you may actually exceed her. Hubert, are you hitting on him? Is this what you've been doing? Excuse me? In a way, it is merely a mask for your tactlessness. But even so, your relentless optimism... Well, suffice it to say that it is your best quality. Do you two want me to book the local inn for you? I... What? You are constantly striving to grow as a person. To seek new knowledge, to push new limits. <laughs> you just said women played the long game. Lysithia has been playing hers for five years. Everyone stop, we forgot something important. Lysithia said her house never intended to get involved with the Empire politics. They were just answering a call... A call to arms from an ally. What if Lysithia planned this years ago? She just gained the Empress. 
And meanwhile, Hugh Murd is trying to hit on Ferdinand. Oh my god. When others might get distracted or abandon their path, you never yield. Says the guy that got distracted and let his empress get taken over by Lysithia. In that aspect, at least, I think you are unmatched. Why did you turn Hubert gay? I didn't do shit! Hubert, are you alright? Yeah, Hubert, please, stop working the shaft. It's awkward, there are children here. Do you have a cold? Or the plague? Am I hearing a deathbed confession? What the fuck was in that tea? Ugh, it was only a compliment. There's no need for such dramatic exaggeration. I'm sorry, but you were showering him in compliments. And you don't compliment anybody. What the fuck has happened to you, Hubert? Are you... getting butterflies? Are the songs and poems making sense? Oh god, Hubert. What the fuck has happened to you? Dramatic, you say? I am so confused right now. I do my best to analyze others without emotion. Yet you're feeling emotions, aren't you? Even if I find you to be a contemptible degenerate, I can still evaluate your abilities in an impartial way. Uh... So, because you assess people without emotion, you are totally confident in your appraisals. I wouldn't say that those compliments were without emotion, Hubert. They sounded pretty emotional to me. It seems I was wrong about you. Oh, God. Huh. You actually understand. Uh, guys, you're standing awfully close to each other. Personal space. COVID is a thing. One and a half meters, please. Please, do not compliment me again, though. I find it quite unsettling. It is like hearing a snake sing an aria. Yeah. At least put it in a letter next time. Wait, what? In the very unlikely event that there is a next time, I promise to put it in writing. So not only did Hubert just compliment someone, but he's gonna write a love letter? What is in that fucking tea? I've gone five years and then gone insane! This is what happens when you lack a father figure in the house. You all lose your shit and the little one takes over. That was actually coffee? I don't care what aphrodisiac it was! I'm gone five years and all you kids are in horny jail! No wonder you haven't been killing people! You've been too busy looking at each other's asses! No one here is actually conducting a war. No one. None of them are actually conducting a war. This doesn't feel like a fucking war. Does this feel like a war to you guys? Look, the life expectancy is like 20. Give him a break. The kingdom is falling around us while Lysithia is eating cake. This is literally Maria Antoinette bullshittery happening right now. Somewhere Lysithia is smiling evil, drugging cakes and drinks and it would surprise me jesus christ guys quick little break i need a cook of coffee and let's wrap up the remaining of these supports so i can hopefully grind a few more for next week because this shit is getting so good so edelgard started war against the neutral nation just so she could get married quicker We need fan art of Lysithia drugging cake and drinks with her supports hung up on puppet strings. 
A little bit of introspection uh, that I had during this three minute break was as to why I probably admire Lysithia the way that I do. And I have a theory. My theory is that because I was so inexperienced at the beginning, I got burnt. Why is it going dark? I got burnt. I sort of grew a little bit cautious with trust issues. And then I dedicated a lot of time to trying to understand the inner workings of how people think. And that was a little bit out of inexperience, but also out of the fear of being hurt again. And that sort of made me feel like I had power and control. But being able to predict how people work and being able to sort of understand those emotional triggers. The thing that scares me about Lysithia is that she understands the very same things. However, what scares me is that she probably understands them on a much deeper level. Not only that, she has been perfecting her craft a lot more than I have. What scares me is that I might not be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Lysithia and that I may, in fact, fall victim to that. However, at the same time, that challenge, because I am a brainless, testosterone-driven slav, is very enticing. The challenge of it is very enticing. It may sound stupid, but We've seen time and time again, males literally ramming into each other like a bunch of bulls or goats or rams. It happens time and time again, but it's, it's enticing because it's a challenge. At the same time, it's not necessarily a challenge you might be able to overcome. And being in a vulnerable position where you don't hold the position of power is actually terrifying to me because it means you're vulnerable. Kuma, you must ask yourself, would falling victim to Lysithia's charm be so bad? Well, I'm a person with trust issues, so I would consider it mortally terrifying. Uh, that's why you should keep her in a position of power. That's why you should put her in a position of power. I can see Art of Lysithia on a throne with Felix as her footrest and Edelgard serving her cake. Oh boy. It should be, um, what's her name? Sothis's throne. It's terrifying. It is absolutely terrifying not being in a position of power with someone that has the potential to actually hurt you. And if I can be honest, I haven't been in that vulnerable position in a long, long time. Literally, like even now I'm not in a vulnerable position. And I think those type of safeguards are a byproduct of having trust issues. You intentionally put yourself in positions of power so you can't be hurt. And even if someone betrays you, you haven't trusted them enough to do considerable damage. I, I've, I've said it time and time again, even my close, close friends, I keep at a bit of a distance just in case. And these are people that I've known for more than half a decade. That's the level of my trust issues. <laughs> so someone like Lysithia absolutely fucking terrifies me. And now short game character is making you feel like that. It's, it's, it's interesting to say the least. And I'm sure many people like her exist, but uncovering them is difficult. Because you have to be around for long enough to figure out what's going on. It's a very, yeah... What if she's intentionally showing you that she's capable to allure you to the challenge? Well, it takes two to tango, doesn't it? The good ones don't get caught. Effectively, yes. The ones that get caught are the ones that stick out. Hence, I hope Kuma is watching all this from the sidelines. He may get away. The only power that I would have in this position whatsoever is the knowledge that 
everything, well, is the knowledge that nothing lasts forever. Hmm. 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 I'm a big fan of Fire Emblem, just haven't played a single player game in forever. I actually didn't know you had big trust issues, but I guess I should have expected that based on how much you talk about human emotions and stuff like that. Wow, you guys didn't realize I had trust issues? Oh, pff. big trust issues. I mean, my trust issues stem from a variety of reasons, and I've sort of shared bits and pieces of myself through the years, but I, I, I've got major trust issues. I mean, like I said, the reason I started developing an interest in psychology was because <laughs> of my trust issues. I need to understand how people work to prevent them from manipulating me. Do you still not cry? The last time I cried, well, MGS3 Snake Eater. That brought tears to my eyes. But apart from that, was so long ago, I think a part of myself actually died on the inside at that moment. Um, and that's when I in, irreparably changed. And this was many years ago. This is, this is, uh, it was, it was a very traumatic time, but that was, that was the last time. That's when I basically clicked and that was it. You know, I, I sort of made a conscious decision. Uh, to change as an individual and I got myself through some very tough times, but I had to do it alone because in that point in my life um, it, it was the most challenging time in my life and all the people I considered my friends and I'm talking the people that I considered my best friends, you know, my best friend uh, another few people that I considered really close that I shared secrets with and they shared their secrets with me, you know, we were close um, they basically just turned their backs on me and abandoned me. And in the moment when I was at my lowest and I needed someone, anyone, I was completely alone. So my friends turned their backs on me. Uh, my family turned their back on me. They didn't want to help me. Uh, well... <laughs> One of my parents was a psychopath and the other one was a sociopathic manipulator. Hmm. Um, hmm. Guess what happened there? And so I was completely alone. I was down and out. You could say that I was completely depressed. Um, I was pretty much at my limit. And, you know, after years and years of shit, I was just like, you know, I want out. I want to alt F4 out of this reality. And... I was very close to it, and I mean fucking close to it. And, you know, I, I, I was literally in tears, I was sad, I, I was broken. You know, I, I was completely broken, I had, I had nothing left. Uh, I had no reason to be here, nothing to look forward to. And it was, I was pretty much on the edge, and then something clicked and it was just... It was just the decision in that moment that if I have absolutely no reason to go on, I have nothing to look forward to, I have nothing to live for, I have no one I can depend on, I have no one I can trust, I don't need anyone and I've got nothing to lose, right? If I've got nothing and everything has gone to shit and I hate my life and I wanna end it all and I don't wanna exist anymore, I've literally got nothing to lose. And so, I stopped crying, I got up, and I decided, fuck you, I'm going to live for myself. I didn't know what I wanted, but I decided that I didn't care for everything that had happened up until that point, or anyone that I knew up until that point because they had all abandoned me anyway, so they didn't matter, fuck them. And I think that's, that's the root cause of my trust issues. Because when I needed people, they had all abandoned me. 
Every support network I had, every family member, every friend, parents, fucking everyone and everything abandoned me. And then I was like, fuck it, I don't need it. And so when I got up and stood on my own two feet and got out of that hell, I realized that I don't actually need anyone to do what I need to do. And so I became so self-reliant and independent that it became unnecessary to have friends. It became unnecessary to develop any social, any form of social relationship to the point that I didn't even know how to anymore. I, I couldn't, I couldn't feel, you know, I don't know how to describe it, but up until that point, I was, I was a social extroverted person that wanted to make friends, that wanted to talk to people, that wanted to connect to people. And after that point, I was simply incapable of connecting to people in that way. I felt absolutely no desire to interact with anybody, nor did I feel any motivation or any, any sort of, uh, any sort of, happiness from doing so it almost felt like it became robotic in a sense because my number one objective was survival and my guard was completely up you know if the proverbial walls were up i was encased in them i myself don't trust myself don't remember when it began but i don't trust myself to make simple choices that's that's a very tough thing but you're going to have to figure out why you don't trust yourself. Because I actually trust myself quite a bit. Because at that point, I was looking for someone external to help me. You know, I was trying to reach out in all directions. And no one would. Everyone just sort of pulled their hands back. And in that moment, I ended up finding myself. Or a part of myself, or maybe even... I created a part of myself like uh, Yuritsa, um, someone that could stand up on their own two feet. And I found the strength within myself to do anything. And I spent several years actually testing the limits of that inner strength and confronting you know, my biggest fears and the biggest challenges I could find. And I found no matter what the challenge, I could do it. And I realized that I can literally do anything. Now's the time to figure out what is it that I want to do. I did competitive martial arts and I was doing well at it, but at a certain point there was no satisfaction in victory. The satisfaction came from learning that I could do it, that I can develop and that I can achieve, but I felt no satisfaction in winning a tournament or beating someone. The, the challenge was in overcoming my own personal limits. And when I found out what the mechanism is to overcome my, certain, my personal limits, my mind started wondering what else is there that I can do. And then it was, oh, finding you know, a job so I can have a roof above my head and you know, not be on the streets. And I managed to work that out. And then I started asking myself, okay, well, what, is, what else is there that I enjoy? And I found out very quickly, well, one of the things that got me through a lot of tough times growing up was actually video games. And it was something that I really enjoyed. And surprise, surprise, it was something that never actually stabbed me in the back. Um, it was always there for me, even when I didn't have friends, when I didn't speak English, when it was all, you know, by myself, whether it was Pokemon on Game Boy Color or, you know, Grand Theft Auto, Metal Gear Solid or Devil May Cry on PlayStation 2. So I started up the YouTube channel. And I started playing what I, what I enjoyed playing. I played some World of Warcraft. Uh, then I saw the anime Danganronpa and I thought, oh, this was really cool. And I started playing that. And then a lot of people didn't actually enjoy me playing it. You know, a lot of, you know, mean people and no one was watching it. And I was kind of like, well, I don't give a shit what these people think or what they have to say because at the end of the day, I'm doing this for me. And then I started noticing I was, you know, I was editing and I was uploading these videos. I was getting less than like five views. At one point I was getting like two views per video. And then slowly people started commenting. And there were, you know, genuine comments, you know, genuine people. It was also some of you guys. And I was kind of like, huh, are they, are they trolling me? Are they messing with me? And then slowly over time I started, you know, responding. 
I started chatting and it, and it turned into, you know, a back and forth dialogue. And then I was like, shit, there's actual people out there that I share an interest with. But of course I was still, you know, very guarded. I was like, oh, okay. And then it turned into a habit. And then I enjoyed not only playing the games you know, that I was recording, whether it be Warcraft, whether it be Danganronpa, you know, I actually enjoyed also uh, interacting with the people that were watching it. And then I enjoyed producing the content because I really enjoyed seeing what people thought about it and continuing that discussion. And then I started making some guide videos, you know, to help out people and whatnot. And that was all good for a while until it became more and more negative. And then I kind of lost the motivation to do that because the ratio of negativity to positivity was 90% negativity, 10% positivity. So I basically said, you know what? You guys want to be assholes about it? Fuck you. I'm going to stop making guides. Um, and so I started focusing on just gameplay like you see me doing. And I still enjoy doing it. And then I got into the habit of actually responding to each comment. Each comment. It might sound crazy, but for a period of about a year, I responded to each and every comment. And then slowly we grew and then it became dozens and dozens of comments each day. And I remember uh, I was in Japan. I was at the airport for about 10 hours and I had fallen behind on the comments and I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to respond to the comments. So I spent 10 hours at the airport scrolling through the YouTube app, reading each comment, responding, having conversations with different people for 10 hours. And then I was like, wow, that's a lot of people. And for a lot of the comments, I was like, you know, I was like, I'm sorry for responding so late. You know, I didn't mean to not respond. It was just that I was getting a fuck ton of comments. I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. And so I went through responding all this. I got on the plane and I was back in Australia. And as you can imagine, you get off the plane, you get the notification. And I had hundreds of notifications and it was people actually responding to my response to their comment. And a lot of people were like, oh my God, you responded to my comment. Yeah, that's fine. And you know, the dialogue continued. And I was like, holy shit. I actually enjoy doing this. And I really wanted a live stream at that time, but I couldn't because shitty internet. Um, and this was at the time where I was literally editing out one Danganronpa video every week running to university at 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning to upload it so it could be uploaded for, you know, Danganronpa Monday. And then it was Warcraft Tuesday and I was trying to do Horror Friday. You guys remember those days if you were around for long enough. And I fucking enjoyed doing it. And I was like, yeah, I enjoy doing this. I originally did it for myself. I really enjoyed it. I continued doing it. And along the way, like-minded individuals just started hopping on, you know, hopping on that train. And this little community started growing. And then we got fast enough internet to do live stream. And now here we are doing live video games and discussions. Crazy, huh? Now, I don't have a particular moral to this story, but it... If you could take anything away from that, it's that... Life is nothing but opportunity. If you end it, it just ends. That's it. You know, if you alt F4, that's it. Cut to black, no credits, that's it. But if you hang on a little bit longer, it can get a lot better. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but if you listen to yourself and you ask yourself, what do I really want out of life? What do I really want? What makes me happy? What gives me purpose? You might actually find something that brings a smile to your face and makes you excited to get out of bed in the morning. Crazy, isn't it? 
Now, I gotta read through some of the comments because uh, I've just gone on a little bit of a tangent and half the people are probably telling me, Kuma, shut the fuck up and keep playing the game, you keep doing this. But I really wanna read some of the comments. Um, I'm gonna start from the top. Whenever I came to a choice, my mind will just go blank and I will just sit there trying to think of a way not to make the choice. The question, why, comes to mind. You really need to figure out why that is. Hmm. Kali would be proud of you, Kumo, it sounds. Kali? Who is Kali? Yeah, bro, I remember years ago and years ago, I got into you via Danganronpa 1, and then I watched 14 hours in a weekend of Danganronpa 2. Good times. A lot of people are actually binging it right now. I feel bad because I can't respond to every comment like I said, but there's a few dozen people actually binging the Danganronpa series now. And it makes me so happy that I did those LPs. I could have stopped at any point. I could have stopped at the point that I was getting less than 10 views, or people were telling me that I'm shit and I should go kill myself. Or people were saying I'm just trying to be like PewDiePie. How the fuck do you figure that? But anyway. And now there's thousands of people watching the LPs. And enjoying them. And ending up here. It's fucking amazing. I'm so happy I didn't give up. So fucking happy. So fu It's insane. Which at the time was two Kuma videos. Or trials. Yeah. I remember. I, I remember. Oh my god, I remember. Yeah, 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 everyone remembers that. I remember V3, 100% streaming trial one, and you didn't end up streaming till chapter four or some shit. Yep. I remember that, and the control input error. I arrived at the time around uh, Ultra Despair Goals of V3 because Blaze told me of you. And the funny thing is, I actually met a lot of cool people like Blaze, like Weeby, like Nico, like a lot of fucking people. Like, I actually messaged Nico when he had 20k subs, right? Back before he was a lot bigger. And I messaged him back in the day when I was actually asking him. I think it was a recommendation about a setting or Danganronpa. Or I think I was having copyright problems with Danganronpa. And I just reached out to him. And he helped me out. And this is back when he had like less than 20k subs. And he responded. Um, and then I hit him up. And then he hit me up. And I hit him up. And... So it just it just turned into a thing and I met I think Blaze in a very similar way. I saw he was doing Danganronpa videos or something. I don't know whether he hit me up or I hit him up, but it just turned into a thing and same thing with people like Weeby. Like this there's so many random people I met that way. And then you realize that there's just, everyone's just a fucking person on the other end of the screen. Everyone's fucking human. Everyone's a fucking human, you know what I mean? And then it just, it, it, it's, 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 it's weird. And everyone comes with their own story, which is really cool. And you find that there's actually people, because we're all on the internet for one reason or another, right? We're not on the internet because everyone treated us nicely out there. You know, so uh, we have a lot more in common than we realize. Question. You can still be considered a sociopath even if you do feel genuine emotions. I think the societal definition of a sociopath is someone that doesn't feel empathy. So, that's the technical definition. But they did do an experiment with uh, prisoners where they asked them, how would your victims feel? And the emotional part of their brain lit up like a Christmas tree. So to say that sociopaths are incapable of feeling emotions is technically incorrect. What it means is they don't typically feel emotions unless they knowingly want to. So, I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but, um, you know... Yeah, this isn't a single rant. Uh, this is that. This isn't but a single rant. This is Kuma sharing his life path, and it's something I can genuinely enjoy. I think a couple of months it would be a year since I've met you, and I believe you've taught us a lot of things in different topics. Time flies, Mike. Time flies. I, I I've met some people within the last twelve months, and the last twelve months has been crazy, particularly with COVID. Um, it opened up so many doors. 
I tried streaming like crazy, particularly with Persona and reactions and things like that. And we've met so many cool people along the way. It's just been absolutely crazy. And in a, in a weird way, it's helped me keep my sanity because it's given me a purpose throughout this whole shitstorm that has been COVID. No, great tangent. Okay, no one's actually giving me shit for this. Thank you. Uh, some people search for that longer than others. It's not the destination, it's the journey. I think it's better to search for your meaning and your calling rather than not search for it at all. Some people never search for it ever, which is really sad. They just go through the motions of living without ever living. Yeah, I need to think of the why. Might try to figure out it sometime. It's, it's a very powerful thing asking yourself why something is. And it's a very scary thing because you need to be honest with yourself. And it's a very difficult thing to be honest with yourself. It is. It is very fucking difficult. But here's the best part about being honest with yourself. No one needs to know. <laughs> no one needs to know, right? It's between you and you. I mean, if you can't be honest with yourself, I mean, fuck, you know? It, I, I, I personally find driving therapeutic because if I don't have any music on, my brain starts to think. And then I'm able to sort through a lot of crap in my brain I'm, and I can figure out a lot of things. That being said, when I go for these three minute coffee breaks, I'm doing a lot of introspection. So uh, they're really enjoyable. If it's the Kali, I know someone share with Kuma who it is. I have no idea who Kali is. Go into rabbit hole, Kuma. Oh man, I've been down the rabbit hole a few times and let me tell you, it's very therapeutic. Uh, yeah, I originally found you when you started Persona 5 and then binge the Danganronpa series when you got to like the second or third dungeon in Persona 5. That's the way to do it, Flame Lord. That's the way to do it. Oh yeah, I remember when Danganronpa videos became streams. That was a great day. Nico's cool. Oh, Nico's fucking tops. He's a really good guy. A really... He's sometimes too good. I sometimes worry about him because he works himself to the point of exhaustion and collapsing on his keyboard. And I, I really feel worried because I respect the hustle, but sometimes I'm kind of like... Dude, I'm sometimes genuinely worried for your health because if you keep doing this long term, it's going to take its toll on your body. Like, you know, without sounding like Morgana, you sometimes got to go to bed, man. I mean, I get that you want to edit and export a video every day and I fucking respect the hustle. But if you end up killing yourself, then you're going to miss years of videos. So... You know, it's better to miss an upload a week than to fucking kill yourself and then you miss the next 10 years of uploads, you know? Um, but I sometimes feel it might not be my place to say, but I sometimes feel I have to say, but it, it, it's a tough thing. I don't know. I'm... Yeah, it, it's a thing. Look, you sometimes... I don't know. Um, maybe I should reach out to him and just see how he's going. Maybe I should. Maybe, maybe it would be a nice thing. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's a good fucking sign. You know what? I'm actually going to do it after the stream. I'm just going to send him a message and be like, hey man, just want to see how you're going. Because, you know, sometimes you just need, you should ask people how they're going. Because you never know. You know? It's, that's actually a good thing. Everyone should probably do that. Probably everyone in this entire stream should probably just ask someone they know how they're going that they haven't heard from in a while. You never know. I, I heard this story of this person literally walking up to someone at the back of the school bus and sitting next to them and talking to them. And years later they found out that person, you know, sent them a thank you and he basically said, look, I want to thank you. You might not remember it, but that day on the school bus, uh, when you sat next to me and you talked to me, was the day I was planning to kill myself. So, like, a simple act of kindness can mean the world for someone. So, uh, the world would be very different if we all tried to do one act of kindness a day. So, um, yeah, yeah, I will... I'll reach out to Nico and you guys reach out to someone you haven't heard from in a while. Say, hey, how's it going? That fucking simple. Just send him a DM or send him a message. Hey, how's it going? I'm pretty sure you mentioned it earlier about copyright stuff or watch the order of DR videos. DR anime. Yes! I 
think it was about the DR. I think I was asking him when I can watch the DR anime because DR3 was coming out when I was doing DR2 playthrough and I basically I think I asked him about that but that wasn't my first time talking to him I asked him before regarding I asked him how to do the reactions for the DR3 anime that was the one I asked him how to do reactions thank you good times I remember I just got an urge and went to watch Kuma's reactions to Danganronpa anime. I finally feel like I liked it even if it was old present day. I think I need to actually edit that out and put it up on Patreon because on YouTube, we only have the one where the subtitles at the bottom and the image is sort of blocked. I need to double check if I actually uploaded it on Patreon. I don't think I did where the full anime is present. Kali the VTuber, right. I remember when I always come back here and stuff and it's not for the gameplay or anything it's more if anything for these rants i think that's your most important part is you just acting like a human and don't put on a facade in an ironic turn of events i put on a facade in day-to-day -day life when i go to work because it's expected you know everyone expects a certain level of professionalism and a certain way of doing things so I feel I put more of a facade at work than I do here. Because here I can be honest. You know, like, if you like me, cool. If you don't like me, well, let's not waste each other's time. You know what I mean? So... I'm fucking human. <laughs> we all are. Unless someone here is a beaver. How do you get past those, are you a human, checks? If they ask you, are you a human, how do you get past those? Maybe I should start putting those on the Discord. Also, I could ask, do you still have the boot? Do you still have the boot? Do I still have the boot? What boot? Uh, no one needs to know, but you will know. I mean, you already know. You just haven't asked yourself. Trust me, start asking yourself the question why. Some interesting things will come out. Kali is a YouTuber who makes music and plays. She made a rap about content creation. She compared it to a sword fight against others, where you bleed for success and how it's a fight you need passion for. Also, how not everything you post will be good and others will go after you, but you need to wear those scars with dignity because those who do stick with you are the ones soothing the pain. I definitely agree that uh, content creation is a struggle. But I don't believe it's a struggle against others, because it's not a zero-sum game. You being successful doesn't mean someone else is not successful. I think that's a misconception. And I think that attitude is what brings others down. We should be celebrating the success of others and learning from their success, rather than trying to bring others down. Because trying to bring someone down in no way helps you. Like, it doesn't. You just, it's, it's, have you ever seen, well I haven't seen it, but I've heard if you put lobsters in a boiling pot and one of the lobsters is about to make it out of the pot, one of the lobsters will pull them down. So instead of each lobster, one by one, climbing out of the pot, every lobster's too busy pulling lobsters down rather than helping each other get out. And in the end, they all end up dying. It's not a zero-sum game. More than one person can win. And typically people that work with other people will succeed. Because, I mean, you get a benefit of working with other people where you get no benefit by trying to bring someone down. I mean, simple logic test. But I do agree with what about what Carly's saying um, about passion. You need passion because it is a struggle. It's a huge struggle. It's huge. And if you don't love what you're doing, you're not going to last. In truth, I'm going to be seeking therapy on my wife's request come Tuesday. Been waking up by... Sh wait. Been waking up by shooting up heavy breathing and gasping. So got to unpack stuff, I guess. That does sound like there might be some baggage that you really need to address. You might be having traumatic dreams that you don't remember. I used to have a lot of traumatic dreams... And 
I'm not going to self-diagnose PTSD, but it was because of traumatic shit that I didn't quite process. And once I processed it, I didn't have those dreams anymore. So there could be something there. I, th I, I, think it's, I think it's a good idea to actually talk to someone. I mean, it's always a good idea to talk to someone. You don't have to actually do what they recommend or what they say, but... I mean, what's the worst that happens? Nico B is a great guy. Completely agree. Better to say it, so someone does. Yeah, I think it's always better to reach out than to hesitate. Oh yeah, if in doubt, just reach out. If they ignore you, you tried. A lot of things Nico does create some of the best memes from games he's played. Oh fuck, he's a meme factory, man. He's a fucking meme factory. That and bagels. This party of a stream just became a chill old talk with some friends. It did. It did. But we gotta definitely complete these supports so we can do anime reactions. And don't worry, I know a few people are worried about anime reactions. But guys, I have li literally driven here on Friday night for an hour, sleeping on the floor so I could stream from here. I'm pretty sure I can push an extra hour with some caffeine for a reaction. Nothing's gonna miss out. Like, chill. <laughs> Guys, chill. It's me, alright? Chill. Just fucking chill. You had a cup that was shaped like a boot. Yes! I do have the, um, it's actually a glass. Um, I got it from a German, I think it's called the Bavarian. It's a, it's like a German restaurant. And uh, it's used for beer. I think it's a liter or a liter and a half. I do have it. I do have it. It's actually um, in the kitchen. It's not here, but like, you'll see it when we get the new studio built at the place. So what kind of facade does Kuma have at work? I am curious. I basically just take bits and pieces of my superiors that seems effective, and I stitch together their personalities in a facade. So, yeah. If you saw me at work, you would think that I'm very professional and very dedicated, which I am, but I, I do what I need to do, but it, it doesn't get me up in the morning with excitement. I'm professional, but hell, if I could be doing YouTube full time, I would be. They got you fucked up at some party. No, we just had to drink the beer in order to get that one. Yeah, but there are some that should be brought down, or at least stopped. I agree. There are some assholes that probably shouldn't be in positions of influence. But unfortunately, stupid people are always made famous because the masses are typically not that smart. That's why so many people are trying to keep up with the Kardashians and so many people still feel people are superior based on their eye color, hair color and skin color. Educated people don't typically hate other people. The lobster analogy I thought was crab bucket actually. It might be crabs or lobsters. I, I'm not sure because I haven't seen either of them cooked alive because I kind of don't like that. And there are always those who act that though. Mm -hmm. Chili, that's the one. What I'm worried about uh, in terms of anime is that we don't have enough time. Oh, we'll have plenty for a few episodes, don't worry. We'll have time, trust him. Oh yeah, we'll have time. You guys forget that I filmed the entire Danganronpa 2 LP in about a week and a half. I was taking pre-workout to film that shit. We'll have time. And you have to realize that the pre-workout that I was taking during the filming of Danganronpa 2 was taken off the shelves because it had traces of methamphetamines. I didn't realize at the time, but that pre-workout was taken off the shelves because it had traces of methamphetamines. You heard it, ladies and gentlemen. At certain times throughout the Danganronpa 2 LP, I was high on meth. Holy shit. No wonder I was hyper analyzing the shit out of that game. 
It wasn't intentional, but the pre-workout was taken off the shelves. No, you didn't do that in a week and a half? Oh yeah, that was done in about a week and a half. I think it was done within 11 or 12 days. Because I filmed it all before I went to Japan. Mm-hmm. Wait, was that the Pink's workout stuff? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that seems like an FDA oversight. Oh yeah, big fucking time. Big fucking time. Well, that explains why <laughs> when I took some of that shit and I went to the gym, I was benching so much shit that I actually ripped the shoulder muscles on my back while I was curling. That's how fucked that was. Well, that explains a lot when you got to the fifth trial. Mm-hmm. 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 That LP will never look the same with the knowledge you have now. Enjoy. Have fun with that. Have fun with that. All right, ladies, gents, we need to continue this. You gotta rewatch it now? You fucking should. It's a good. You know what's gonna happen? Years from now, I'm actually gonna rewatch my LPs. I'm gonna forget what I said. I already forgot what I said. And I'm gonna be able to rewatch my LPs. That's gonna be a good time. You know what I fear? My children watching my LPs. I am so fucked. Alright, Ferdinand. Oh shit! Let's watch this. Ah, a perfect balance of rich, smooth, and acidic. Coffee tastes best the day after roasting. Excuse me, but is that the coffee that Hubert gave you? Oh my god. Hello, Ferdinand. You seem to be in a good mood. Well, he just got laid with Hubie. I'm calling him Hubie from now on. What is that supposed to mean? You've got a big grin on your face like you just got laid. Perhaps you expected me to hold a grudge against you after our duel. In fact, I have moved on. Hey, when we get big enough to go full time, we will do a lot of meme streams. My life will become a meme. I will become as meme. Wait, perhaps you're expecting me to hold a grudge against you after our duel. In fact, I have moved on. You mean you've moved on to Hubie, you bastard. Have you now? Well, I'm glad to hear it. Oh, you don't know the half of it, Edelgard. You don't know the half of it, Edelgard. I took it hard at the time, I will confess. So let me get this straight. Edelgard fucked you up. So you fucked her assistant? I always thought that I equaled you in skill, or even surpassed you. But you showed me that I do not come close to matching your talents. Yet a true noble does not give up in the face of defeat. I will continue my training, and one day I will be an elite warrior. That is the path I must take, as a noble and a man of honor. I mean, do you necessarily have to beat her? You really are in a good mood. Your determination is admirable. Why am I getting Undertale PTSD flashbacks? Oh god, we've never done Sans. Oh god, we have to fight Sans. Oh god! Yes, one day I will surpass your abilities, and I will defeat you in combat. Ferdinand, there's something I've been meaning to say to you for a while now. Hmm? Honestly, I couldn't care less that you were of noble birth. <laughs> your fierce determination doesn't come from your bloodline. It's your own doing. Wait, that was a compliment. The reason I value you and want to be friends with you is because of who you are, not who your family is. Yank. I mean, I never would have shipped these two together, but anyway. I have something I would like to say to you, too. Please don't do anything embarrassing. Certainly we must recognize the common folk who strive for greatness and attain it. Hmm? But for those of us born into nobility, things are more complicated. From birth, nobles must excel. If we do not, we will be forced out of our houses. 
Yes, but you have every conceivable advantage to excel. This environment breeds superior individuals, and they in turn recreate the rigorous environment for their own children. Okay, Adolf. Without that cycle, there would be no political elite guiding the world towards prosperity. Prosperity? Do you think this looks like prosperity? <laughs> so you're saying that the kind of world I'm striving to create is wrong? I mean, that's fucking bold of you to say to your empress, who is murdering people that disagree with her! I would not go so far as to say your way is wrong, just that another way might be better. If you insist upon undoing the nobility, then we must build something in its place. We can provide free education for all, and then select the highest performing students for more intensive training and tutoring. A free education? You're talking about socialism, aren't you? I truly believe that people are products of their environment. Well, no wonder this route is red, it's communist. Finding a way to educate the people. Interesting. My god. I'm impressed by how much thought you've given this. No matter what shape the world takes, I'm sure I'll always need people like you by my side. You mean politicians? People with strong principles who will argue with me and force me to consider ideas that are contrary to my own. Yes, exactly! Finally, Edelgard, you appreciate how important I am to your cause. Why do I get the feeling she's gonna put your head on a pike? I've always thought of you as a valued friend, Ferdinand. That's nothing new. Edelgard, I have to tell you something. I think now is the right time. Oh god, please don't confess your undying love to her. Please don't confess your undying love to her. Please don't confess your undying love to her. Do you know what my ancestor Derek Von Eyer said after your ancestor defeated him? Uh... He said, You are an imperial beauty. Please, accept me as your husband. Oh, for the love of God! Halt, Ferdinand. There's a time and a place for everything. But that time is not now. This cuckery cannot continue. No wonder you and Hubie go to well together. You're both cucks! For the same girl! Oh, this is sickening! This is beyond sickening! <laughs> they might even say something. Well, if we cannot individually attain the Empress, maybe if we combine our strength, we might be able to prevail. Look, you two, just fuck already, alright? Maybe if you stick your dicks into each other, you'll forget about Edelgard, because I can actually smell the testosterone from a mile away. Just fuck already! Oh my god! I want off that ship. Now to restate my threat. When you have children, I will find you. I will meet your children and I will introduce them to your channel. You know some of my work colleagues have actually found my channel and I'm just going, fuck off, how the hell did you? But look at it this way, the work colleagues that have found my channel must actually be playing similar games in order to be recommended it. <laughs> hey, Lysithia is laughing somewhere while eating cake. Unfortunately, they have already lost to Lysithia. He didn't land the plane, he completely missed the runway and somehow crashed into the greater ocean. <laughs> I, I, I literally cannot handle this incompetence. Edelgard really said I got two and a half men that want me. The half being protagonists, because let's be real, they can get whoever if they want. Yet he is so fucking oblivious. Edelgard, who else? You two. Ah, fuck it, let's just do it. Professor Hanneman, I... I owe you an apology. For what? Whatever for. I'm not bothered by you investigating my past. Did you kill his family or something? Ah, oh, so you knew. You're right. I'm afraid I found it difficult to quell my doubts. I mean, isn't it standard operating procedure for an empress to investigate everyone in her court? I mean, that's just sensible. What happened? It was over 20 years ago. I suppose you had just barely been born. Now that I think on it. 
My younger sister was afflicted by a disease of the heart, and she met with an early death. It is easy to lay blame for such things, but I considered crests themselves to be the root cause. Your father bore a major crest, and both you and your grandfather inherited minor crests. I mean, am I the only one that does background research on all the girls that he dates? I mean... That's not creepy, that's just... Doing your homework. Your sister was born without one, but as the daughter of a family in which crests are prevalent, others saw potential in her. Oh, God. That's why she was married off to a certain noble whose influence was waning. He was undoubtedly desperate for power. Sometimes I consider myself blessed to not be under the grip of parents anymore, because I can actually live for myself. Jesus. But no matter how many children she bore him, none manifested a crest. She fell from her husband's favor and was mistreated, ultimately leading to... Oh my god. As an up-and-coming crest scholar at the time, I knew only despair. Imagine how tragic that would be. You're born into a family with large expectations and you're considered a disappointment because of something that wasn't even in your control at birth. Then, you're married off to someone and basically used as breeding livestock. And when the kids don't have a crest, you're basically mistreated until you die. Oof. What was the use of my research if I could not even save my own sister? Ah. That's why you abandoned your position in the Empire and came to Garrick Mach. My sister is far from the only victim. Many noblemen have done the same to their own wives, and I despise them for it. So my quest began. I would unlock the secrets of crests, make them available to any who desired. Well, that explains why you're so motivated. If I achieved my goal, the nobility would be rendered obsolete, and my sister could finally rest peacefully. Wow. However, all these years later, I am still far from achieving my goal. So you're trying to pass on your research to someone else that can carry on your work? A world in which anyone can bear a crest. That's not so different from a world with no crests at all. Quite right. And that is why I have chosen to fight by your side. I cannot say what lies in your past. Yet I have seen your ideals and witnessed the power of your two crests. I feel certain that you, too, are a victim of this world, just like my dear sister. Professor Hanneman, please, say no more. I've made peace with my past. Now I look only to the future, to the world we're fighting to create. You see, this puts a lot of weight on the table. Very well. But if you will allow it, there is one more thing I would like to say on the subject. When I look at you, I am reminded of my sister, and also of my own youth. Though I could not save my sister back then, I am different now. Yes, please save Edelgard and Lysithia while you're at it. I can support you and lend you my abilities. I will fight for your cause in whatever way you need. Why do I get the feeling that this story will not have a happy ending? Thank you. That means a great deal to me. 
Your knowledge and your experience are both invaluable. And your passion, too. I welcome your support. And in turn, I will do my best to earn the trust you have placed in me. I feel dread. I feel legitimate dread. <laughs> Wow, we have another Linhard and Akuma. <sighs> hmm? Something on your mind, Edelgard? This may not be the best place to sit and think. An archer might try to take a lucky shot at you. Right you are. I appreciate your concern. Wear a helmet. In here, I'm trapped in a whirlwind of political affairs. I just needed to escape for a moment to get some fresh air. I understand completely. May I ask what was on your mind? I'd like to help. To be honest, I still can't forget what you told me before. I don't want you to misunderstand and think I'm against everything the church represents. There's good there, buried in the corruption. Still, I find it extremely difficult to step back and accept the good, overlooking all the rest. For the world to start anew, it's necessary for the nobility system and the Church of Saros to both be completely crushed. So you're going to destroy the current world and create a new and better one in its place. Hmm. Doesn't that sound like someone we all know and love? Perhaps. I suppose that might be the only way for you to achieve your goals. I believe so. But then I think about people like you, who are devoted to the goddess. People who are unlike the others, who are willing to fight for themselves rather than leaving everything in the hands of a higher power. When I achieve my aim, I'll be crushing their... crushing your emotional and spiritual support. Yet despite all that, you're still here, still supporting me. Don't worry yourself about that, Edelgard. People are always weaker than you think, but never as weak as you expect. Hmm? The Goddess is our silent foundation. She watches over our every step, but never gets directly involved. Like a voyeur? You, on the other hand, want to support us with your own flesh and blood, to push us forward toward a better future. <sighs> As it were, some problems require drastic measures. I believe you know that better than anyone. It takes strength to take those measures. That's why you inspire people. You're probably why some of them get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> A few of them would like to think of you as the reason to not get out of bed in the morning. Ba chica wow wow. Okay, that was inappropriate given the circumstances. You're too kind. What can I say? I'm a guy. I make the occasional dirty joke. I'm entitled to a few every stream. Don't judge me! No. I've just been around a bit longer than you. That's all. While we're on the subject, yes, the goddess does supply me with emotional support. But so do you whether you know it or not. Hmm? I... What do you mean by that? <laughs> Just what I said, my dear. Just what I said. Ugh, now I'm blushing. Let's change the subject, shall we? <laughs> as you wish. I think I've said quite enough as it is. Did you just wink at the Empress? Well, Edelgard is gathering her concubines. Someone said something about Bernie. All right, it's Bernie time. Um, here. I patched up the clothes you gave me. Hey, thanks. You've helped me a lot lately. I feel like I should be doing this stuff myself. But ever since you patched up my sleeve, I've been really interested in your craft. Craft? Uh, you mean my embroidery? Yeah, when I saw what you were doing, I thought, what the heck is that? 
but it turned out to be a nice touch once I was actually wearing it. Practical, too. When you're embroidering, you patch up the torn parts with new cloth, right? Hmm. And that strengthens it, so the same part won't break as easily next time. <sighs> I'm glad you like it. At first, I felt like you thought it was stupid. I was worried you secretly hated me or something. It made me pretty scared to show you my stitching. <laughs> Sorry. I should have told you I liked it. Thanks, Bernadetta. I'm glad I asked for your help. Oh, um, it's nothing. What'd you make this time? A hornet, huh? You do like the scary critters, don't you? It zips out from the trees and strikes! Just like you! Hornets are not friends. Bees are friends. I sting like a hornet, do I? Actually, I like that. You know, you ought to be more confident. Um, which knight wears that armor in the back? It looks really short. Well, what? You're good enough at sewing that you can make a living out of it. You should take pride in that. Open up a store. Your skills would be really useful to the war effort, too. We're always needing equipment mended. Useful? Oh, no, no, no! I'm completely useless! Even more so on the battlefield. <coughs> Says the girl that's one of our top archers. That's not true at all. You've been a great help. Get that girl a horse. We need a Mongolian Bernie. Maybe I'm a better fighter, but I've got nowhere near the same skill at sewing. We can help each other. Isn't that what friends do? Friends? We're friends? Bernie made a friend. Hey, come on. I know you're not the most confident, but this is getting silly. Of course we're friends. I completely trust you. Aww. <laughs> Leone? Yeah? Get your clothes torn up as much as you want. I'll always be here to patch them right up. That's adorable. <laughs> right, for sure. But I wasn't just talking about embroidery, you know. Wait, what? Wait, what? Oh god, fucking damn it. Can everyone stop sleeping with everyone? This is becoming ancient Rome! You. Hmm? What did I do? Am I in your way? I'm in your way. I know, I get it. I'm sorry. I, I can't stand the sight of me either. I never said that. Stay right there. You're always running away. You must really find me irritating. Irritating? I know. I completely... What? N no, I mean, I know I'm irritating, but... Huh? Stop. Do you remember when you came up behind me and knocked the sword from my hands? Hmm? I need you to teach me that technique. Wait, you disarmed Felix. How? Sword? Kuma, what did you do to your class? Why are they all hooking up with each other? What does this feel like your class has become one giant harem? With the professor excluded. I am as confused as you are. Technique? That's, um, that's a joke, right? Fun fact, Felix and Bernadetta's English VAs are in a relationship. They might be married, but I'm not sure about that. Because that's, that's just about the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. You could just hear that she's laughing. Maybe so, but I saw you do it. You don't remember? You moved like a flash, and before I knew it... Nope! Wasn't Bernie! You must have dreamed it. Unless my accuser dares to produce some evidence... What the fuck is this, Ace Attorney? Yes, evidence. I still have your satchel, see? Hmm? Oh, my satchel. Wait, that? No, that's, um... That's not mine. You can't prove it's mine. You know it's yours. I'm innocent, I swear! Merciful Ciro, save me! This is getting nowhere. But... <laughs> hmm, maybe I should corner her like last time. Then she'll use the technique without thinking. A fox is most dangerous when cornered. <laughs> Never mind, I'm done here. Why, 
lies. All lies. I didn't do any... Huh? Well, where did he go? Two socially awkward people interacting with each other. It's so cute. It's fucking adorable. He's gone off to eat some of those cupcakes. God damn it, Lysithia. God fucking damn it. All right, Felix. Leone time. Sorry to keep you waiting. How long did you expect me to stand here? Damn, she's playing hard to get. I did just say sorry, but I could say the same to you. Oh god, this. You were pretty slow to settle on a time. Oh god. I can't help having a busy schedule. Plus, I thought you could use the extra time to prepare. We could go back and forth like this all day. Or we could get started. See you later, t -Volt. <laughs> You were the one who kept me waiting. Let's begin. On my signal? Hurry up. That's better. Okay, go! Let's see what you... Huh? Oh! Oh, a pit trap? Seriously? That's right. How you feeling down there? Are you... going to... keep him in a hole? Why are all the girls in my class psychos? Coward! Say what you want, but Captain Gerald taught me this one. Wait, you didn't pay attention to your footing? You are no Virgil. <sighs> You're heavier than you look. I'll admit, I wasn't expecting that. Idiot. If this were for real, you'd be dead. Aren't you glad I put straw down there instead of spikes? You know, that's actually a real thing. They lay down a spike trap, you walk over it, you fall down into spikes. Ugh, just imagining it. Yes, I underestimated you. I suppose your lateness was a ploy to distract me. Yeah, she did a bloody... bloody masashi on you. You're not wrong. I did it to rile you up, draw you in. Uh-huh. Did you also have a 41-inch wooden bucket? You're capable, confident. I was counting on that. So, what do you think about Captain Geralt's training now? I think he's an asshole. But a good asshole. His technique worked and you won. What else is there to say? Winning is all that matters. You drew my attention to a major vulnerability. I'll need to be wary of traps. Thank you, Leone. I think you need to be wary of your own self-confidence because it's going to become your own undoing. Mr. I'm whipped to cupcakes! Seeing as you're thanking me, can I ask you a favor? Uh-oh. Will you come watch my next training session? I'd like a few pointers about fighting in close quarters. Did someone say close quarters? The loser must pay tribute, I suppose. Yes, I'll help you train. You will? Thanks! He's already taken, Leone. His ass belongs to the Cupcake Queen. <laughs> Alright, Felix. Judging by Felix's interactions with Lysithia and Bernadetta, he seems to have a preference with smaller petite girls that catch his interest, or at least treats them more nicely than others. Lysithia with cake and Bernie with her technique. I mean, maybe he likes some fun-sized. Here you are. And now he's going for the nun. Oh, were you looking for me, Felix? You were injured in the last battle. Are you okay? I'm fine now. Thank you for your concern. You really are troublesome. I'm so sorry. I didn't want to get in your way out there. I just couldn't help but worry. I was only trying to keep an eye on you. Why does this feel like the same situation that Shamir and Kaspar are having? <sighs> what are you even doing on the battlefield? You endangered yourself and got hurt. Such a stupid thing to do. My god, this is Shamir and Kaspar. Yes, of course, you're right. I have no excuses. If you intend to carry on being such a fool, you'd best stay near me. <laughs> Ha ha ha! 
Adorable. Are you sure? I'd hate to get in your way again. His own little pocket healer. You can... Um... Mm hmm? Hmm? <gasps> you can keep thinking of me as your little brother. And that'd be better than going through this again. Did you just little brother zone yourself? Oh my god, the men in this game. I told you Kuma, a big giant harem. They share each other while the girls try to drag Kuma into it too. Did he just motherfucking brothers? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me get this straight. You are treating little fun-sized girls like little sisters and you're looking for a big sister. Dude. 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 Japanese culture is fucking freaky as shit. But I thought you didn't like that. Didn't you say you were fed up with it? Oh god. I am fed up with it. I've already spent years filling in for someone who's dead. My older brother inspired love and respect. He was a great knight. He died. Since his death, his memory has followed me around like a shadow. Oh, I didn't know you had a brother too. <laughs> I don't let my personal feelings distract me on the battlefield. Still, do I really remind you of him? Well, you don't look like him, but something about you feels so familiar. It just makes me want to protect you. That's not to say that you're incapable or unreliable or anything like that. In fact, it's quite the opposite. You're the one who just came to check on me. You need to pay attention to your surroundings. You're reckless. Lives are at stake, including mine, when I have to run over and save your skin. Yes, I'll try to be more careful. Thank you for being so kind, Felix. <laughs> <sighs> Whatever. Everyone in my fucking class is such a softy. Well, ladies and gents, what's going on here? Blessing of the land. The fuck is blessing of the land? As you can see, I have done all of the supports. I am now going to be able to grind additional supports. Maybe for next week. Maybe for the week after. We didn't have a Fire Emblem stream in about two weeks. I made up for it, as promised, by grinding the supports. I think we're cool. I think we're cool now. That being said, I did not expect this. I did not expect this level of cuckery. I did not expect this level of game. And I did not expect whatever the fuck is going on between Hubert and Ferdinand. <clears throat> Hormones are a thing, ladies and gentlemen. Hormones are a thing. They make people do uh, interesting things. You did not expect to come back after five years to find a harem between your students. I come from a country where wars are sacred. This doesn't strike me as a war. And it actually has four hours of fire emblem, like you said. I am a bear of my word. Hey, did I hand you a shrinking potion by accident? I could have sworn that was the gender swapping one. Don't be hating. She's fun sized, that's all. She doesn't even have to get on her knees to blow. <laughs> you want to add anything to that conversation? Nope, I'm good.